we're going to be doing problem 14.9 from the fundamentals of chapter 14. I'm extremely wiped out right now. I went hiking in like 95 degree weather. Fully exposed. It was a bad idea. Alright, so let's get started. We're trying to find, let's see, we're given the motor winds in the cable with a constant speed of uh, velocity of 3 feet per second. Determine the power supplied to the motor. So, remember that uh, they also give us the, the weight of the load and the efficiency of the motor. So, remember that the efficiency, uh, we're, we're going to be covering this section pretty quickly just because my intuition tells me your professors are probably not going to even care much about the section, so we're just going to be doing the you know 14.9 and then we're going to do 14.12 after and then we're going to get to the real meat of the chapter but anyway so the the efficiency, the efficiency of the motor is going to be given by like you know the power uh, output versus what's the what's the power input okay so we're trying to this p input p output so we're trying to find this value, okay? So, you know, they put a bunch of ropes here. They kind of just try to throw those off our, our game, all right? Um, but yeah, so let, let's read a little deeper into the problem. Constant speed, constant speed, okay? Which means there's no acceleration, okay? That's good for us. That makes everything a lot easier. Uh, so the way... I, broke this problem down was okay um, I know that if we look at you know let's say um, what's it called this this system over here or this particle let's say okay we know that there's like tension let's call it tension C and then there's the weight right and we know because there's no acceleration um, throughout the throughout the system, I know that my forces in the y direction here are going to equal zero because there's no acceleration, and that just tells us that the tension at the at point C is just equal to the the weight of the the load which is carrying. Okay. And what does that mean? Well, we know that the tension is going to equal 100 throughout this rope, right? Because we neglect the weight of the pulleys, we, ne we neglect friction, stuff like that. So we know that the tension on one part of the rope here is going to be the same as this part of the rope. Okay. So you know we're good. F we're good up to there. Now I'm trying to find, um, you know the 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 tension that's on this rope, right? Because we're trying to end up, we're, we're trying to find what's the P output. We know the P output is going to be some force, right, dotted with some velocity. Or force times velocity cosine theta to get the power output. Okay? So here, I know that I, I don't know the tension on this on the section BE of the rope. So let's say we don't know that, right? But we know it's gonna be times three, right? Equals something. Right? And that's what we're trying to get. Alright? So how do I do that? Well, let's let's isolate this pulley here and I'm gonna just highlight it in red. Alright. So when we look at that pulley, we know it has tension going up on both sides, right? And we know that this tension is the same, okay? Remember, like I said, in this purple rope, the tension is the same throughout, okay? So that means I have T here, I have T here, uh, and if we, if we keep it consistent, we say, okay, this is TC, this is TC, right? And then it's getting pulled down, so there's a, there's a tension going down, downwards, which we can call TB. All right. I 
again, luck, lucky for us, there's no acceleration. All right. So when we do forces in the Y of this system in red, it's equal to zero. All right. So going back to statics. All right. And then what, what are we left with? We get 2TC minus TB equals zero. So the tension of the lower rope, that tension of rope BE, is equal to 2TC which is just 2 times 100. All right. And if you if you got to here, that means you're you're home free now. All we got to do now is all right, what is the power output? The power output is going to be P output is going to be the force 200 times the velocity, right? This, remember, this theta is the angle between the velocity and the tension. So look at the drawing. In purple, it's the direction of my tension. This black arrow here says the, that's the uh, direction of the velocity. The angle between them is zero, so cosine zero is just one. So that's what we just get 200 times three. And this is equal to 600, let's see, pound feet per second, okay? However, because we're in the English system, we have to convert that to um, hor uh, horsepower, okay? Which means we have to divide this value by roughly 550, and then we end up with one point. 0.9 horsepower. I believe it's 1 horsepower. 1 HP is equal to 550 pound feet per second. Okay. Yeah, so let's see. One, yeah. So that's our output or uh, power output, all right? But they want, like we said in the beginning, we established that we're looking for the power input of the motor, all right? So taking this value, we're gonna say, okay, my efficiency is equal to 1.09 divided by power input. And we know the efficiency is given to us by 0.8, 80% efficient, all right? Um, which means let's just, you know, move everything. Let's isolate P, the input power, right? And, I, and then we just divide 1.09, we divide it by 0.8, and then we get 1.3625. Horsepower. Okay, and then that's and that's pretty much it. That's that's all. So remember, don't don't think too hard on these. Uh, when it, when it comes to like power, it's always force times velocity. Remember, you can use energy methods, or um, if the energy methods are proving to be a little too difficult, you're like, oh, what? There's no, I don't know what the kinetic energy of the system is or try to use the kinematic equations like we did here. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time and attention. We'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, drop a comment down below and I'll definitely try to get back to you. Thanks guys. Appreciate it.